welcome to uh, New York and the Mount Sinai Cardiac Catheterization Laboratories for the endovascular and peripheral complex cases webcast. Anywhere you may be in the world at your time zone, it is a, a few minutes after 8 a.m. in New York. Um, it is uh, my pleasure to uh, announce to you right away that the next uh, meeting is going to be here on the same time, September 24th it will be our next one. And as you know, besides the live case you are watching in just a few moments, um, you can also view all, all the past archive cases along with our comments using the archive buttons at the website. And throughout this case, uh, you could also submit questions that I will be passing along either in my discussion or uh, to the operators in the room uh, using your questions button. Uh, you could also submit questions or comments regarding past cases uh, using a similar function in the website. And even the case of today, if you miss some parts, you will be able to, uh, to view it uh, later on uh, in, as a part of the archived. So, um, Without any further delay, let's go over to the uh, uh, laboratories in order to uh, do a, uh, to welcome uh, uh, Dr. Krishnan, Dr. Wiley, Dr. Guja, and co-workers regarding a complex uh, carotid. Uh, I would say aorta carotid intervention is a quite interesting case. PK, why don't you go ahead and uh, George, describe things to us? Uh, again, I'd like to welcome everybody back. It's the summertime is over, and uh, we're starting off with a really difficult case here. Um, it's a very interesting lady. I'm going to have Dr. Guja go ahead and present the history. Can you put up the history slide, guys? Let's go with some Hi. Uh, morning, everyone. So we have a 60 year old female patient uh, with of recurrent uh, left side of PIA. Uh, louder, please. We have a 60 year old female patient who came in with uh, complaints of recurrent uh, left sided TIAs. She had about four TIAs in the past six months. Okay. Uh, she has. Uh, yeah. She still has a minimal residual uh, left sided weakness. On the MRI, we could see that she had multiple um, um, multiple infarcts on the um, right, oh, uh, especially in the right mid middle cerebral artery um, area. And then she has a past uh, medical history of uh, occluded right common carotids, uh, for which they she had an aorta carotid bypass graft. Uh, aorta carotid bypass graft. Let I me just repeat that to, for the audience because it's a very unusual uh, anatomy. Right, so it is uh, from the aorta to the right internal carotid artery. Um, this was done about 15 years ago. Um, reason being probably because of the right uh, common carotid uh, occlusion. I don't know why the subclavian uh, graft was not done. Um, and then um, after that, she had uh, re stenosis of the ostium, of, uh, she had a stenosis of the ostium of the bypass graft about eight years ago. And then she had a stent placed in the ostium of the aorta carotid graft bypass graft and uh, she also has um, so we recently did a uh, subclavian artery she had a subclavian artery stenosis for which we did stenting for subclavian steel so she had dizziness and left sided TIS along with it so she had full full fledged steel syndrome she has a history of hypertension hypercholesterolemia she's type 2 diabetic she is a uh, cabbage uh, cabbage and she had a PCI of left circumflex to the uh, left main because her bypass graft closed she was an aspirin, uh, low pressure, crest or indoor glipizide. She's on lisinopril, clopidogrel, and uh, glucophage. She's very well controlled on her um, diabetic group control as well as hypertension control. She's an ex-smoker. Next slide, please. Physical exam, she just has some residual left-sided weakness, very minimal though. But she keeps having this uh, TIA symptoms and she keep, keeps going to the ER um, every, every two to three months. And uh, we performed angiograms early this uh, July, and she had uh, severe three-vessel disease. Of course, her left, left main state in, uh, state was patent. She had a lima conduit, but she had osteal uh, subclavian, uh, left subclavian stenosis, which was very, very tight, about 90%. And she had, on the stress she had, clearly she had a LED defect, and she had uh, steel syndrome uh, kind of uh, episodes. So on the, on the iodogram, her arch is type 1, calcified arch. So she has occluded right common carotid, we know from before. She has an iodocarotid graft. The stent had 99% uh, reed stenosis. Um, we barely were able to even difficulty have, we, ha we had difficulty even engaging the stent that time. And, and took some pictures. And, but she had uh, more steel syndrome uh, 
phenomenon. So we had to fix the subclavian first for cardiac reasons. So we did fix the subclavian, and she's now here for revascularization for her instant restenosis with the iota carotid graft. Can you go to the, uh, the angiogram, right? Yeah, let's review the angiogram. It is very critical to understand what's going so on with this case. This is the, this is the angiogram, iodogram, and the selective engagement of the iota carotid graft, which we performed in uh, July, uh, middle week. So you can clearly see that the instant restenosis of that stand is 99%. Uh, it's the, literally hanging by a thread. But the graft itself is patent. So the right vertigo is, has become very hyperplastic. And it supplies basically retrogradely fills the whole you know, the carotid artery system. But uh, because we, we assume that because of this instant restenosis, she keeps having this recurrent TIAs. And she's here now uh, for the intervention of that. Uh, Can you, uh, Ray, uh, go, go C minus here? It's very important for the audience to go all the way to the aortogram. Go to the aortogram, Ray. Yeah, let, let, let's spend a little time in the aortogram, the diagnostic aortogram, to understand this anatomy. Um, uh, and uh, step by step. Obviously, this is a part of a subclavian stent procedure. It is fine to describe those steps there and that anatomy as well, and particularly the relationship of the takeoff between subclavian and left carotid and this unusual carotid, uh, uh, aortocarotid bypass. So, you go to the previous one. So, this is the um, arch angiography, and you can see it on the arch angiography here also. You can barely see it filling uh, because of the because of the stenosis. I think the way the arch, the great vessels take off is uh, this iota carotid graft is placed more posteriorly in the iota. So it looks like the stent has been placed posteriorly. So it's just difficult to engage the stent in general because now we have a subclavian stent, and I think that's giving us a little more difficulty in engaging the stent. That makes it more difficult for us. So go to the next. So this is our, uh, this is our subclavian. Right brachiocephalic. Right brachiocephalic. Right brachiocephalic. Next. Now, in this projection hasn't changed. It's interesting to see that the brachiocephalic, I'm going to go back to the, the other one. So it's very unusual. A, yeah. Go back one, uh, and, and it's very go unusual to understand that the brachiocephalic, that typically is the last. That's right. Uh, uh, before it's, the, uh, that's right. the like ascending aorta, it, it's it is actually distal to this stent. That's right. It is almost like arterial lucero. So yeah, exactly. it, it is uh, typically that kind of a takeoff. I think yeah. the, uh, the left common carotid comes first, the subclavian yeah. comes next, yeah. and the finally the brachiocephalic comes off. So and you can clearly see the stump of the right common carotid right uh, at the beginning, at the, right know, at the bend of the brachiocephalic. The glide vertebra. So the right, uh, you can see the right vertebral has some osteal disease, but the right Soft vertebral right. is really Soft. hyperplastic. It's really hyperplastic. I mean, it's, it's taking over the whole right sided system. Uh, but but if you if you actually take a picture of the, we actually took a picture of the right vertebra, you can see it retrogradely fills the whole graft. Next picture. This is picture of which vertebra or the left vertebra? This is the left vertebra. Left yeah. vertebra again. Uh, very dominant. Yes, very dominant left vertebra. Okay. Pretty much uh, takes yeah, care of the. So whole you're injecting the left vertebra in this in this uh, uh, in this uh, cerebral angiogram. Right. So it fills everything. Fills pretty much everything. That's right. But the question is, George, here, how, why is he still having recurrent TIA is the question. So, so the, uh, we, we discussed it with neurology, and neurology felt that this may be the cause is the instant restenosis she's having. So obviously, like Dr. Gu just said, we went ahead and fixed the, uh, uh, what is it called, the, uh, the, um, the subclavian for the elema ischemia. Now right. we're back here trying to fix that vert and uh, excuse me, the, uh, the uh, osteal common carotid uh, bypass. And you can see here, if you can go live, we can see what's going on right now. But has the patient had an event since the carotid, the subclavian stent, or no? No. So it is possible that the vertebral circulation in the circle of Willis is a contributing ischemia to the right MCA if it's associated with filling that circulation. It's uh, definitely possible, that, uh, Dr. Dangles. We were, we were, Dr. Christian was mentioning that before. Uh, right. Because it's filling the whole left side, uh, right sided system. It's possible that once we fix the subclavian, she stopped she right. start having these symptoms at all. She completely, the, her dizziness has completely resolved. She doesn't have chest pain anymore. She didn't have any TIA symptoms at all since we have put the uh, left subclavian stent. But uh, if you look at the vertical picture from the previous uh, 
angiogram. This is the vertebral, uh, selective vertebral engagement. Posture, right? Yes, so the right vertebral engagement. And you can see that the right vertebral actually fills the MCA territory and retrogradely fills the whole graft. You can see the graft filling retrogradely through collateral. So that's why we thought that because the yep. right vertebral is filling the MCA territory, is, uh, is this graft the main issue? Because it looks like they plug the uh, iota carotid graft into the internal carotid. And that internal carotid nicely gives off the MCA. So, yeah, clearly when the MCA fills from the posterior circulation, that's, right. uh, that's very far away. And, and that is uh, associated with uh, um, the ischemia in that area, or I should say low threshold to develop ischemia in that area because it's just far away. And, um, you know, ultimately both vertebras are merging together, so the basal system fills the uh, MCA. Um, that's, um, you know, it's on the best flow pattern. So we have improved that by two measures. One, you, st you fix the left subclavian, that is a, a very big uh, help. And second one, we have the subtotal lesion of the uh, uh, graft to the uh, internal carotid on the right side. And uh, if we can open that, that would also uh, be of some help. Um, if we had not seen it filling at all during the, any of the vertebral injections, I don't think there would be much of an interest in opening it because that would have been completely occluded, but apparently it's not. You can go live. So we can see, we can see live going on. The, see, the wire is able to engage the stent. It shows that there is a channel there, but it's just the way uh, the stent is positioned uh, or the graft is positioned in the arch. We are having difficulty getting any catheters close to it. No. Now you understand. Oh, don't, don't, don't push. Try to get it in. We're trying to get, as you can see, this is probably the closest we've been to this vessel. Now I'm going to try to push this wire forward. Give me a torquer, guys. Now, which wire is this? This is a stiff glide, George. Yeah. Um, stiff so straight. Stiff uh, angle. Oh, stiff actually. angle. Oh, it looks like straight in this Yeah, well, it's probably gotten yeah. straightened out with all the <laughs> manipulation we've been doing. So right now she's on heparin. She's gotten uh, uh, 5,000 plus another 1,000, 6,000 of heparin. ACT was two something. Now we're just trying to see what, ah, uh, there it goes. So, you know, I, you know we're, we're having a hell of a time here, partially because I think, I think the, uh, the stent is, is, no, 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 I, go ahead, Jose. I, I think this, the stent is, is, uh, is, is probably occluded uh, at this stage. And I think it's an important exercise to really probably use this as an opportunity to go over some of the catheters that we have for the carotid system, and uh, and um, and and then talk about you know uh, you know what is the real approach to engaging these difficult subsets. So as you can see, this particular catheter is is very very difficult. Go ahead, Jose. See what happens. Let's see. Dr. Wiley is trying to push this forward for me as I'm trying to engage. So let's take a picture here. See where the hell we are, huh? Let's just leave it there for now. Don't push it through the aorta, please. Okay, let's just walk, slowly walk that out. Now remember that you're looking at a, a 2D image um, and our, of a 3D structure, as we all know very well here. So the issue just becomes is where exactly are we? Are we posterior, are we anterior? And since this is, this is not a natural anatomy of the, of the arch, it also makes it very difficult for us to figure out you know, where we are. We're probably just gonna do a little hand injection here just to see where we are rather than a med rad injection. Come forward, guys. What's a little die? A little more. So we might have to go to a coronary wire or something just to snake it through, and then, God willing, just be able to get something through here. So right now we're getting a little bit of blood flow back, and I'm just gonna give a little test here. See, so we're in. So that, give me just a coronary grand slam here, guys. Just give me a grand slam. Let's try with a grand slam. So you can see, George, it is open. And it's very difficult for us at this stage to see, you know, how we're going to get into this. We'll try our best. I was going to say, you want to try the straight glide if the grand slam I, doesn't go know, anywhere. I'm just a little worried about, about doing this with a straight glide. I think, I just, I don't know, you know. I agree with you. I think everybody's suggestion is here. I think tr try to go with the simplest tip here and try to just snake it through. Maybe even a fielder to get some access. Maybe the right thing to do. Actually, give me a fielder, guys. Yeah. 
Give me a fielder. It's probably better than a grand slam. Give me a fielder. Field at no, a fielder. Field at 300. So, so we're just going to try to snake a just a regular coronary fielder, please. We're going to try to snake a fielder through. Once we get a wire access across this, I think we'll be able to do something something a little different, which is probably try to get a 035 super core up, and then and then and then do what we need to do as we discussed. Uh, Elizabeth's going to be watching her um, the ACT here, telling me how much time we have, and obviously watching the patient very closely. So let's see. You know, again, I think to everybody at home, as Dr. Dangus and I spoke earlier today, this is one of those very very difficult cases where you know the question becomes is, well, are we? Oh, Dr. Wiley, are we out? I know. Looks like we're out though. Let's see. Let's just see how this wire behaves. Don't. don't let's just see how this wire behaves. Hold on. Problem is with the movement of the aorta, yeah, we're out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we'll just try to wire it again. Now you will post here. Remember the wire is what led you in. Remember that. So let's try to wire it again. So so the whole idea is with this aorta, you know, being the way it is and everything, it, there it is again. Let's just see if this field or field won't go. Let's advance it slowly. Field is not going to give you no support, probably. Are we through that strut now? Yeah, we are. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we're going to engage it directly again. So we're going to try to wire this again, George. It's going to be one of those cases, I think, where it's going to be quite difficult, and it's obviously a challenging case to try live. But as so always, do you have a, do, what, what, what are your sheath uh, uh, choices right now, and all Right this? now we have a support sheath, like you said, in the aorta. Um, Which is what, a 45? 45, uh, just 40, take 45, out the 6 French. Four choices, don't push those to, to take out, Give me back the, um, the stiff clutch uh, to take out the tortuosity in the aorta. And now we're just trying to rewire this. So everybody at home saw how tight this ISR is. The problem here is if we can't fix it this way, the only thing I could suggest is, you know, let's talk about alternatives, you know. So one is could be a direct cut down of the neck by Dr. Ferries, our vascular surgeon here, and then a stent for retrograde through the graft may be a possibility. The other thing, um, you know, maybe, you know, we have no other access here. I think, you know, we're not going to do a direct puncture of the, um, pull it back a little bit, we're not going to do a direct puncture of the um, actual, um, uh, what is it called, graft, and then come in. So I think it's going to be a, a very difficult choices here for the lady. She's already been operated on this neck, so it's not a very easy surgery for Dr. Ferries. And obviously the other thing is to leave her alone and see what, see what happens, you know? See, well, no, I think, again, you're posterior. See, so because of the unnatural way this graft takes off, you're, you're, you're having problems actually engaging it. If I can find the channel, give me a torque, guys. If I can find the channel with the wire and thread it through, then we may be able to, to obviously make, make this happen. So George, I mean, I mean, we tried so far. So let's talk about a little bit about the catheters, George. In general, uh, you know, uh, Jose, why don't you go over some of the catheters we use here in the cath lab. Hold on, let me just trace where this will go. Okay, advance now. No te mueva, mama, por favor. Hold on, hold on, don't push yet. And now it's talking. Yeah, that's all I can go. Don't push now. All right, let's torque it back in. Oh, you gotta get the catheter closer today. Okay. Wait, 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 torque it the other way. Let me torque it, we're both torque. Okay, now push. Okay, now it's going. Okay, now you're in, now you're in, now you're in. Now just hold it there now. Uh, as soon as you remove the wire, the catheter bends. That's the part of the... Yeah, but this wire is not crossing it. This is the, uh, hold it there. Oh. There's the fielder guy. Jesus Christ. So we're going to stay on floor here, George, for a little bit as we yep. struggle. I guess it's kind of fun to watch people struggle, but we're not enjoying this, I can tell you that. 
I'm just going to let it bleed back a little bit. Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, the, uh, so any other suggestions, George, as far as catheters we could try? I think now that you have the sheath in the aura, try the VTEC one more time. That uh, I know you tried it before without the support. Um, the problem with the VTEC, George, is that the curve is against this. So when I tried the VTEC, what happened is, remember, the VTEC is good if, 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 we can, if we can make it point backwards. You know what? Give me the modified Simmons 1.5. Let me try the modified Simmons 1.5. There's a, so the Simmons catheter is a specialty catheter that you can use in these kind of very difficult uh, aortas. Uh, you know, the 1.5 is a catheter that's a specialty catheter that's made by Merit Medical. So Merit Medical, I think, is now purchased by somebody else. So we have uh, the old modified Simmons 1.5s, um, and, and we're going to open that up. Let me see the 1.5. No, 1.5. There should be a 1.5 there. So the modified Simmons 1.5s are the ones, these are rare catheters that we use in our cath lab, so I hope we have them in stock. So, you know, sometimes, you know, you're gonna have to deal with these kind of cases when, 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 uh, when you think that it's not gonna work out. So they did find it, thank God. So let's give another ACT, Dr. Wiley. We're gonna be on top of the ACT here as we, as we manipulate. So, so again, l let me go over the catheter. So basically, you know, as everybody knows at home, you want to define the arches, arches as type one, type two, and type three. Okay, so the, so the type one arch um, is, uh, Jose, can you go over that as I go over this? Yeah, so you draw two imaginary lines, one up the, uh, the upper uh, ridge of the uh, aortic uh, arch, and one in the lower ridge. If the uh, brachiocephalic uh, trunk originates above that, superior horizontal line, we call it a type one arch. If it originates between the superior and inferior uh, horizontal line, then it's a type two. And if it originates below the inferior uh, horizontal line that we've drawn, then it's a type three arch. So, so since, so this, this, you know, technically speaking is a type one arch. However, now we're dealing with, with uh, should go to Lomag, please. We're, we're dealing with the, uh, the um, uh, what is it called, the, the actual arch being, uh, being um, I know, we're trying to engage the subclavian now with the Simmons. See, see George, even the smallest Simmons is, is, too, is too large. You see this? So even though, now I'm gonna try to form it, and let me see, I know you can form it in the order too, that's what I'm trying to do. So you can see here, uh, okay, there we go, okay. So now I'm going to push it. It's phenomenal yeah. how you go into it. It's too long. See that? Even, even the smallest Simmons is too long. Go mag up, please, for me. Well, I know, but the VTEC is slightly smaller than the Simmons. If you manage to get it in the left carotid, it may just pop into that a little bit. Let's see. That's in the left carotid. That's in the innominate. No, yeah, that's very close. It's posterior, though. It's the problem. Yeah, right behind it. Put this way. I'm trying. <laughs> Trust me, it's I'm easy trying. to direct. <laughs> well, you know, everybody can try. It's just, it's just one of those that it's going to be very difficult. We knew when it was coming in that it was going to be difficult. But you know, so so basically, if it's a type one arch, Dr. Wiley, what catheters do we use? So we try to use simple curved catheters such as the JB1. You could use a JR. You could use a uh, vert tip catheter. Give me uh, a. Give me a. Um, some um, people venture to use uh, uh, VTEC catheters that here, can guys. be used as well. Uh, type two arches, at least in this lab, we primarily use uh, VTEC uh, catheters. Type three uh, arches, then we use complex curves. Um, catheters such as the Simmons, which uh, we try to uh, form at the uh, left subclavian. So everybody saw how I formed the Simmons. So what you do is you, you torque it in the left side, you torque it in the aorta to get this sort of like a figure eight curve, and then or this U curve, and then what you do is you go ahead and re-engage the, um, uh, the, um, the um, subclavian, and then you push a stiff wire through, or you can just torque it to, to make that happen. So right now I'm just trying with a wire here. Let me just put the wire at the tip and then see whether I can somehow, just like Dr. Danga said, pull it, push it. You remember when you pull this catheter, it's gonna jump forward. 
So you want to push it and then torque it. Let's see whether that's it. I don't know if that's it. Uh, maybe, maybe not. It's probably the aorta, huh? No, I think you're in the right place. No, it looks like the aorta. That's the aorta. Yeah. That stuff is behind the stent. So, you, so, so this is this is kind of how you use the Simmons Try to do it. this. Yep, nope, that's not. That's too much. Try it there. Let's try the VTEC again. Okay, let's follow Dr. Dangus's guidelines here and try the VTEC. So you push it down. Uh huh. Let's try it's that. Behind. No, it's behind. So the Simmons is not working the way we thought it would. So, so what we're going to do here is get the Simmons out of the body. Let's get an O3. Okay, give me a, give me an O35 super core here. So when you remove the Simmons, it's also very important to, to go ahead and remove it properly, which is to, which is to put an O35 super core wire in and then walk it out. We did. We left it on the table. Need another ACT? Give me a 5 CC. So we're going to pull another ACT now. George, what other catheters do you think? Do you think? No, it's wasting. George, any other catheters you can think of? I think we can try the JR4. We did. Oh, JR4 so we tried the JR4, the Vert Tip, the VTEC, the Simmons uh, Headhunter, Headhunter, JB1. So you saw we engaged it, but we cannot pass anything through it. So now this really, you know, turns out to be okay. What are we going to do next year in terms of how we're going to be able to uh, to uh, to to get rid of this? Um, you know, a horrible occlusion for this nice lady, you know? So that's the question. I like how you describe the indication. So, so, what's that? I like how you describe that. Horrible occlusion for this nice lady. That's well, putting you know, everything it's, together. It's, it's horrible to be going through this kind of process and <laughs> not being able to get it fixed. I, I mean, like, like Dr. Guja said, we did accomplish one thing by fixing the, um, um, the subclavian. I think we got rid of some of her symptoms. But I mean, this is a good exercise in, in trying to think, uh, you know, on, on how you can, you can tackle these tough cases. To me, I think if we fail here, we'll try for a few more minutes, uh, you know, and I hate to fail live like any, any, any operator does, but I think, you know, this, this, this brings up a lot of other options on how we can treat these kind of cases. I think one of the things that we can do is like, like we just talked about, do a direct, you know, stick into the graft surgically and then go ahead and, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, fix this from a surgical point of view, which may be what you might need to do. Well, the other approach is just wait and see. I mean, she's pro probably okay after we did the uh, exactly. subclavian. Exactly. See, that's, too, that's fine. Yeah. See, see, George, how it's, how it's looking? Yeah, find the left carotid. So you we are, know exactly where we are. That's, that's the left carotid. The, take a little picture there to make sure. It is, for sure. So we can, we can, we can try. Okay, ready? When I tell you. Hold on. Come forward. Okay, ACT, Liz, where are we at? Okay, a little die. Okay, so there's your left carotid. All right. So I'm, let's try, I'm let's try to clock it. Let's try to counter clock and push it a little bit. And well, push it is going to go forward. I mean, go yeah. in, right? I'm yeah. going to pull it. I mean, I mean, push it exactly, yeah. exactly what you're saying. But see now, a little die, guys, keep giving die. Okay. A little bit. See, but the problem now is how do you? Uh, is a little die again. Ah. No, that's under. Now it's post here. All right. Well, let's do that a couple of times. One time, we're gonna, it's not going to jump as much. If it jumps a little bit less, that would be good. Well, the problem is I don't want to scrape the aorta too much either here, you know? Uh, we've done quite a bit of that already. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I agree with you. Well, she's on heparin, full-blown. and. Uh, no. Even this seems to be small. You want to use something like the AR2 and flip it up there? Okay, a little bit. Oh, let's see this one. Oh, okay. You need a... Oh, yeah. Need like a straight line. Let's try to have a wire oh, there. Right. 
Uh, give me a, um, I will use a glide, not uh, uh, so it has some support. Uh -huh, let me let me re-engage it. I think you're engaged. Well, okay. Oh, we're, we're definitely engaged. Yeah, we're definitely a little but engaged. the problem is when the stiff wire is going to go, the no, stiff well, is going to kick. Why don't, don't you take the, the soft, soft angle glide? Give me the soft glide, soft guys. Glide. Soft angle glide. Yeah. Let's try it with a fielder first. You won't be able to get this thing. So as you can see, I don't know if the uh, viewers can appreciate, uh, it not only has it pushed the catheter, but also tilted it a little bit in order to achieve this position. It's not the pulling, it's the tilting uh, that uh, makes it engage this. It has to be tilted a little bit to the side. Um, needs to go in a little bit more and then tilt again. No. All right. We know it can be done, though. Well, we got in with the other catheter, too. It's not a question of getting it done. We know it can be done. I know, but this one is backing up in the opposite of the wall, so it may allow the wire to go in a little bit more. Yeah, okay, that's good. I think you're there. Even, even my, my fielder is getting pushing, pushing it out. You know what was the loc how this goes? I'll try with the multi-purpose catheter, actually. No way, it's too violent. Yeah. I mean, we could get a glide multi-purpose. I think try with a, keep it there and try with a glide because the wire has to have some push to go through. Oh, yeah. Oh, not engaged. Let me, you know what, I like this angle. Let me just pull it back here. There's a multi-purpose and they'll pass it, it's just getting the wire through. I think it'll go right in. You know what? I, I'll be honest with you. I think right here, I don't know guys, I'm getting a little antsy here. I think we've been in this vessel for a long time, you know. Because the, the angulation it has, I don't think none of this catheters will give you. That's my point. So the other thing, I think it would not be unreasonable using a multi-purpose catheter, just sliding the wire. And if it goes through, then we could exchange for whatever. But how would you use a multipurpose catheter to? I think it, the, just the, the mild curve it has would allow us to get into the ostium of the stent. See? Even this, look at this. Yeah, it's a big curve. It's like, All right, give us a multipurpose catheter. Let's try it. I mean, at this stage, I think as the audience can see, I, mean, I don't think we can be struggling any more than we are. And then a straight glide. Uh, not a soft glide. Uh, no, a stiff uh, straight glide if we use a multi purpose. Yeah, we're at the mouth of the stent, that's the problem. We're not able yeah. to we're not able to actually engage into the stent nicely. Yeah. Try the multi purpose professor. Try the multi purpose. While they get it ready, I'm just going to take this out. Check. You give another tube of heparin. Give me the multipurpose catheter. So this, this will be our last catheter we will try. And if this does not work, which Dr. Wiley may be, as always, right. And we'll see. Give me a, 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 a super core. Hey, we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. The problem is it just may be the one. You're right. Maybe the mouth is long enough to get in. You want to try a multipurpose guide? Uh, we're just going with this just to try to engage, George. Once we engage, I think the case is really a two-minute case. No, the, what, what I'm thinking about, if you would like it to engage, the, the, the guide can take, it, the, can take a, uh, uh, the 35 wire and then alongside you can uh, put the 014 wire. Can you give me a glide wire here, guys? This actually is probably the most favorable, as Wiley said. A straight glide. You shouldn't telescopically, but it may go in. And if it goes in, it's just a straight catheter. You could, could advance it. Exactly. As I think Jose's idea is very smart here. Let's see whether we can execute it the way he wants us to.
Well, we engage a subclavian, that's for sure. Yeah, that's it. Try to advance it. Advance uh -huh. the caster. I'm going to wedge it as much as possible, if possible. It's wedged. Does it? Uh, Probably there's a lot of tension on that catheter right now. Uh, that, I, I would say just try the stiff, straight, stiff glide from right there. This is the straight stiff. It is a straight stiff? Yes, George. Okay, go for it then. I'm trying. It's the best engagement we've gotten, so. I think we're going to try a fielder, maybe. Yeah, you got to find the channel now. Oh, no, hold it. I hold it. It's deep. Yep. You want to use an angle glider? Let's, Let's try a fielder. This one, this one, this one. Why don't you try the 38 stiff glide? That may be the way we're going to go. Yeah, that's a, a, another possibility. If you maintain that, you just increase the heavy duty of the, of the wire. Can we go to another view to make sure we're in the stand and not the aorta? Now, we're in the aorta, guys. No, we're not. No, no, it's not the aorta. That's the stand. It's just there's so much friction in there that the 35 wire just get trapped with the frictions. Let's see. Oh, yeah. is that this look at this, look at this channel. Well, you need a new wire. Is this, new? this is not new. Maybe get a, a new whisper. Yeah, let's just inject. Make sure yeah, this is, a, this is a new. Um, Do you have a V18 wire? Give me some back. Give me a V18, guys. Push it, sir. I'm not touching anything. Right, so that's good. Let's see now. We're, we're firing straight out, straight up the barrel. Okay. Yeah, that's good. We just have. There is some glide friction glide. there in this. Give me a, give me a uh, uh, thing. Angle glide. The, v, the V18 is a good idea. Also, it may go. I yeah, think you need some pushability. That's what we're trying to do. I, I will go V18 and 38 stiff that's glide. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, we could bloody the wires out. If this doesn't go, there's no way no 035 stiff is going. Well, the, the stiff is glide, is is uh, is hydrophilic. So is the V18 though. The body is hydrophilic. I, I think that you know what we see is that if it's not, it, it maybe tr it gets trapped in. Whoop. It get <laughs> interesting. You got both sides though. Uh, it's going. Can you show me above now? Beautiful. All right. Okay, guy, uh, hold on. Now we need to put Take a little bit on. more. I'm going further up. Are you kidding me? Okay, that's good right there. Let's take this up now. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's going to go. Yeah, it's can we have an 035? Uh, Walk this out. Uh, buddy, no, no, buddy, buddy. Oh, go, go with the trailblazer here. Trailblazer. Trailblazer, okay. 035 trailblazer. Okay, watch this out. Uh -huh. yep, yep, yep. You're okay. So multi-purpose and V18, the golden, uh, the golden combination. Wow, I think in this case it's the experience of everybody involved in this room, uh, you know, and the suggestions because. I just, I think it's a, you know, we're still not done with the case, but this is probably the hardest part. Now the question is, now we've got to change that for a long sheet, since we have a 45, and then go forward with the, with the intervention. But let's first get, get, get this across. So we're going to work this. So what we normally do, guys, is as, as we go up the order with this, we're going to watch both. We're going to watch like this, exactly like this. So we're going to watch this, the ostium of the stent. Somebody get off the table, please. Yeah, you may also want to be in a little bit lower magnification. You don't need such high mag exactly. anymore. Exactly. You can watch more of that. Yeah, you can, the wire can Ricky, go a little bit higher. Why can I move this table? Oh, there you go. I'm going to go slow. Okay, that's fine. Okay, watch the wire now. What, what size trebler is that? It's 35? 35. 35. Uh, I don't know if it's going to go. Let's yeah, it'll see. go. It'll go. There it goes. Beautiful. Okay, now get it up. 
Okay, stop there. Okay, now it's essential. Now, now I need a 035. Um, actually, give me a super core, give me a super or, core or, or an Amplot super stiff. Give me an Amplot super stiff with a uh, with a curve. The J tip. J tip. J tip. The blue yeah. blue wire J tip. Yeah, we have the. Give me the Amplot super stiff. So now no. we're going to have to try to change everything out and engage. I'm still, uh, Wiley and I are still a little concerned about that other stent there, George. I think that's going to create a little bias for us, a little bit of difficulty. We might have uh, to destroy that other stent going forward. Well, what equipment are you trying to, to, uh, to use? Well, we're going we're gonna to go with a seven French. Our, our plan here is to do a covered stent. Obviously, the worry here is that everything is going to kick out. So we're going to go with, uh, with obviously, Jose has got positive pressure. Karthik is going to in, 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 increase the wire forward. And let's see how this goes. It's going to jump forward, likely, as it goes up, or it could retract. I That's what you've got to understand. It'll go. It'll go. Here we so go. So we've got to get it up further, guys. The further up. Just keep going further. OK, good. That's fine. That's beautiful. Actually, very safe. Very, very safe because it formed the J tip at the, at the end. All right. OK, this I is would great. probably go a little bit more. So okay, good. That's good right there. You're at the uh, little fine. upper on the mandible. Yeah. That's fine. And walk this out now. <laughs> now let's get the sheath ready, guys. Liz, what's my ACT? So um, you have the seven. Okay. You're you going to use a, you gonna use a shuttle sheath? Okay, give me a, a syringe, guys. We have a shorter, the 45 that we mentioned. So we're going to so go gonna with the So we're going to change it out now. So as everybody at home can see, there's not, uh, you know, it's, it's um, not an easy case, but we're managing slowly. Do so now I'm going to, well, hold on, let's just, we're going to let Dr. Wiley handle the groin since he's already there. So I'm going to give AC2 to, to Elizabeth. Did we do a nick in the groin? No, we did not. So Dr. Wiley's going to make a nick in the groin. Hold on, i got to sharpen my hands, guys. Okay, now, now well, let's watch these wires, please. Hold on. So George, as you can see, we're going to go a little over time here, and I apologize for that for everyone. What we're going to do is, since we, we've gotten through, we're going to hopefully sure. now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. Lo siento, mama, sus. Yeah, I know your groin hurts. So what we're going to do is we're walking out this sheet, and it's going to be, she's very, very scarred, painful groin. Because she has a right yeah, yeah. yeah, we know. She has a lot, she has a, she's a vascular path, as we said. She has a bypass of the leg. She's got, she's, oh, lo siento, mama. Give me the scalpel. Let, let, let's first get the, why don't you get the dilator in first and then do the yeah. scalpel. Here it is, seven French right here. Seven French right here. You know, it's already, we did all that. We did, we dilated with the short and everything. So now we're going to go with the seven French. We're just going to stick the dilator in to give Dr. Wiley a little bit of, okay, watch the wire, please. Lo siento, mama. Uno momentito. Hold on. Okay, Wiley, you got it? Yeah. Okay. So Dr. Wiley's now going to manage. The worst thing that can happen is losing the wire, which can happen. And if it happens, case is over. And uh, we'll go home. <laughs> but I hope that won't happen because we're working hard. Lo siento, mama, no te muevas su su cuello. No, okay, is she in? Is it in? Yeah, give me the uh, scalpel. Okay, now we need the scalpel. And give him some uh, mosquitoes, please. So, I mean, so, you know, but I mean, the two other things, you know, the, the lady, she doesn't have any, sir, any real options other than an open cut down in the neck that's already been, been, been worked on. So at this stage, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. We got, we got the 035 wire across. Now we're just going to, we're going to work on this wire. We're going to balloon it and we're going to stent it, you know, and, and that, that's going to be the issue. So it went through. So now we're through. Okay, so I oh know a lot of pain. Now we're going to go LAO. Okay, now you see we're going to go extreme LAO. Where's the wire? Okay, the wire is okay. So we're going to, wait, hold on. So now I'm going to mag up here a little bit for, the, for them to see the engagement of the stand. Okay, good. Here we go. Okay, mama, lo siento, huh? That lady's right there. Oh, I, would, I, I would probably take the dilator through, huh? Yeah, see if it goes. Take yeah, it'll it go. Goes. The dilator will definitely go. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and push the dilator through here. Okay, okay, okay. Now, now we're going to do a telescopic. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna we have the 035 wire across here, so we're gonna keep telescope it into the ostium. Good. Now walk the dilator out. Walk the, what's my ACT Liz? 150 and going. Now don't lose that wire. Now it's the time to watch the the, the, the distal wire. Yep, we're so watching everything. It doesn't everything. come down. Good, very good. There's the distal wire, George, just like you said. That's the wire. That's the distal wire. 
Oh, you're a catheter. So cool. Cool, yeah. okay. you, you, yeah. Now, no, you're going to have to go with the dollar because it's yeah. against the stand yeah. now. Guys, you got to be a little more careful. I here. think you got to see if you can go with a dilator again yep. and uh, and advance a wire. And if it goes, just put the dil everything in the stand through and through. The problem is you have a bend there, so you might have to advance the wire now. Yeah, you have to advance the wire. Advance the wire. Okay, further. Okay, good. Now go with the dilator. Get it to the base of the mantle. It is past the base of the mantle. Okay, good, yeah. Okay, go ahead. No, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. You good? Yeah. Let's see if it goes. It's not going to go, George. It's having a lot of trouble there. Yeah, it doesn't go through. It doesn't go. We're gonna, Jose is just going to hold positive on the yeah, stand. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, just, just hold yeah. positive on the Hold positive on the sheath. Yeah. That's it. Okay, good. That's a good shot right there. That's okay. He's good. That's good. And now it'll cross. Get us now. Um, want to get a five? Wanna I'm going to get a 5 0 -oh balloon first. Yeah, regular balloon. Regular balloon. We're going to have to make channel here to go through. Open a little bit. Yeah. We will. We will. I was just waiting for it to. Oh, okay. Yeah. It won't have tension once I open it. We need 035 balloons here, guys. Get ready to close up. Mm -hmm. Get, give me a 2 e guys, now. Okay, hold it there. Everything's going to bleed here for a second. Let go. You can let go of that. Just don't lose the wire. Mm -hmm. Take this out. It's not. No, I got the wire. Right here is a two-e. So we were going to do an angel sculpt here, which is a good idea. But however, now with all this craziness, I think we're just going to do a regular balloon. George, maybe yeah. you can comment a little bit on the use of filters. Don't, don't lose the wire. That's good. That's a good ACT. I mean, the filter is okay. a wishful That's thinking. I wish we had a filter. I agree, but right? The problem that you, problem why anyone can appreciate five, is that the filter, we, back. Uh, back we can barely get this uh, case done with the O35, and let alone the Amplatz O35 wire. Um, I, you know, I can't imagine this is doable with a filter um, that is going to be an O18 wire. Okay, this is a great comment here. So, you know, if you look at it, you got an 035 trailblazer, right? You, you know, you've got an Amplatz super stiff to be able to get this in. So therefore, you know, you're, you're really struggling in order to do this as a, as a filter, as a case. So at this stage, the filters aren't currently indicated for common carotid, although we do use them. So in this particular case, I think the best thing to do is, is, is do it without a filter because we're not going to be able to get the case done. That's also uh, and, and anyhow, when, it, when, it ca when cases are, are osteo, involve the ostium of the vessel, the filter is not anyhow, um, there no data, no indications, and all that well, in any you, oscillation. Both of us know we do use it whenever we get a chance. Sounds like a good idea. Right. Just uh, nothing like derives it. Anyhow, this case is outside any any kind of study guideline. This and that. This is such a rare case. Uh, these things are not. Uh, so, so you can not, see uh, here, guys. You can see under the picture, the die is still stasis. That's because you have flow from the vertebral above. So having said that, this is ISR. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and balloon this with a 5. ACT is 280. <coughs> we're going to balloon it with 5040. Do we have a 20? No, just a 4020. Give me a 4020. Just give me a, give me short, short stuff. 4020. And then we're going to put a coverage stand based on how this looks. So you can see by the diet stasis, this is so tight while well, it's not washed away. It's actually acting almost like proximal protection here. However, you know, there's, there's likely to be not much debris uh, inside, inside that graft at the state since there's no actual thrombosis here. So what we're going to do is we don't have the wire. You got the wire? Yeah, okay, you got the wire. So now we're going to go forward. Dr. Wiley, as you can see, we're, we're having some, some little bit of flow there, a little bit of issues there approximately. Give me, give me a, a dry one. So when we open this, it's really going to go up. Everything here, you know, the flow is going to improve quite a bit. What's going on distally there? You see it? Oh, it's good. We have yeah, rather great flow. Bend, so right? so it's good. Good. Anybody see the balloon here? Watch the wire. The wire. Yeah. I'm glad we have retrograde flow. That's protective. 
Well, yeah. The, the the, 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 right now, we have a lot of vessel bias because of the because of the uh, the stiff wire has straightened out the the, the bend. But you see that bend right there, George. Yeah, that's a problem. I would not, uh, you know, inflate as I mean. Uh, I mean, the question is, how far are you going to go with the up to there? Well, there's no way this is 20, guys. This is a 40 or something. This this is a 20. They're saying. There's no way this is a 20. 4020, it says. This it's not balloon a is a 20? A then the stem must be 8. It's a 40. But <laughs> well, we're going to balloon with this anyway, George. Yeah, just balloon it there. Don't worry about what's in the guide. And, <laughs> gonna um, little, pull it back a little when the balloon goes And then try to go with maybe a 620. Right. And then you put a cover stem. Okay, we're going to walk the sheet back as it goes up. Wait, hold on. Let me advance the balloon. What okay. to the 40? Okay, go up here. Yep. Let's go to nominal, please. Let's go. Let's see this because it looks like it's actually better match than I thought. This is a 4 0, but it's I'm pretty gonna big. The you're going to go shoot with the balloon now. You're going to go with a 520 after okay, this? Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay, now now we're done. Now now, now we're going to. We're gonna, the question is what size cover stem we're going to use. We're going to walk it out, please. So we're going to walk it out and then we're going to take a picture and decide what size coverage stamp we're going to use. Our ACT is 280 again. You want to take that bend also. Yeah, I think but the problem is, are you going to advance it through that bend? I would have. I don't think it's, it's too. You know, there are a lot of issues here. We also have the ostia, the common carotid on the other side to worry about. We've got a lot of issues here, you know, in terms of how we're going to deal with this. You know, so I'm just going to prep this up, you know. And take a quick picture. Mag up on my Austrian, please, Chip. Just hold it. Yeah, I don't think we're going to extend the bend if, if you cover it. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. So what I'm going to do is first. I think obviously this stand must be something like a 620 or something. And I would probably favor to use a similar size or a covered stand. Apriétame la mano. Apriétame acá. Can we, okay, can we yeah. see the angiogram right, again, please? Okay, man. Okay. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and just mag up here. Senora, no respira ahora. Aguanta respira sin Okay, it's blood. Pull back. Bleed for it. Tell me to open. Okay, good. Okay, respira normal. Okay, aguanta la respiración. Aguanta respiración, amor. Aguanta. 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 So you can see here, you're going to have to cover across that stent. Respira normal. So George, what do you think, a 5-0 or a 6-0? I think 5-0, man. I oh, covered stent. I think we go with a 7 then, huh? What sizes do we have, guys? 7-22. I think that sounds a good one. 738 or 722? 38 is too long. But the question is, George, what about that other bend? What do you want to do with that? You look like you have a lesion there. You think it's just bias. I know, bias. Why don't you take another view? Actually, you know what, George? Why don't we go to the first picture when we engage with the diagnostic catheter? That's a great point. Yeah. Plus. Plus. This plus. We didn't take a picture? I guess we didn't. We did a cine. I think let's go to a, to a contralateral view in order to understand better. I think this is a foreshortening. All right, so you think it's just because of the... Oh, let's take another view. Walk this balloon out, guys. What's out? You know what I'm going to do is I'm also going to bring the amplats down and see whether the soft part of the amplats will make a difference. Oh, Ready to take a picture? Yeah. Well, Ready? I would try to find another view. Inject. Ah, see? There's no bias. It's bias. There's all bias. So. Now you see it, guys. So you see that? You bring the soft part of the amplats down. You take out the stiff part of the wire. Now you can use a 722 stent. Yep, 722. We're going to end it before the bend. Flora? I have seven. Or if you have a six, that would be fine. Unfortunately, it's a cover, George. We're not going to have a six. Okay, that's fine. Do you have Let's a six? This. Oh, we have a 622. Good. I, I would probably try to put the sheath through the lesion I think for the cover stand to advance. Let's see how it goes. We'll do another. But I think we proved that it was biased, so no big deal. Yeah. 
Actually, we're good here. We had brain views from before. <coughs> I think I, I gotta buy Dr. Wiley a chocolate because of that multi purpose save the day here. Oh, oh he wants a coffee. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, for, for those of you at home, Dr. Wiley loves chocolate. I'll give you guys the address on the website. I'm sure he'll get a lot of chocolate. <laughs> Dr. Dang is, I think, I think, I think this case really illustrates all the use of all the different catheters and wires that, that it sometimes takes, and how there's a real uh, cross uh, cross uh, pollination really between coronaries and endovascular in this type of cases. Real. So guys, the wire is down. So now we're going to go with the with the stent. So now we're not going to be able to really inject a lot, gang, because we have um, a 6O and a 7O. So what I'm going to do is. I'm just going to advance it to the tip of the stent, like we talked, because we know there's a lot of bias there, right? We have balloon expandable stent. Oh, right. Even the 22 is long. Look at that. So I'm going to have to go in. Yeah, just go in. Right there. Even further. Yeah, I like this. You see this, George? Put me on corner so Dr. Dengus can see it. I'm going to see it. The problem is now, George, you're gonna land right in that bend. No injection. Now that's what I'm saying. You, you have to you have to advance it a little bit, I think. Alright. I agree with you. So you're like one millimeter inside the bottom of How's the that? Yeah, exactly. You gotta be a little bit inside the oh, I'm gonna give you a little puff here. That's good. Hey, that's fine. Let's take it there. Now now this is very interesting. I want everybody at home to look at the cine. Do you, you see? Wanna... Do you see the other carotid and where it is? Yeah, that's why I was saying that to make sure we're a little bit inside because I, I think was... I got to go in a little more here. You no, you're not going to. If you cover the ostium, you're going to cover the other carotid. Yeah, Maybe no, a little don't, don't, here. The, the ostium had no problem. Why? Don't be obsessed about the ostium. We had no problem. I think I that's think good. A take it more? here. Right here, maybe. Let's take another picture here. That I like. I think that's a little bit too much in. What do you think, George? I think that's too much in. But George, look at the carotid. It's okay, <coughs> because the, the stent is not at the marker. The balloon is at the marker. The stent is four millimeters inside. But I think you, you want me to come back a little? A little bit. I agree here. Let me see. Okay, walk, I'm walking back. Little die. Nope. Oh. All right. Little we'll do die. the maneuver again. You've got to go in again now. Okay, guys, hold on. Uh, don't worry about the die, but go in again because Wait, you came on. back the all the way. issue here. Hold on. I'm pulling the sheet back. Give me a little die now. I like that. What do you guys think? Picture? No, no, it's good. Let's Ready? take it. Let's take a picture. Okay, we're gonna go up here, George. Let's inflate. Go up. Uh-huh. Watch it doesn't go back under while inflating. Uh-huh, I got it, I got it. Uh-huh. How many atmospheres? Uh-huh, poor attention, believe me. It's not going to come out now. Uh, don't worry about no inflating the thing you, do, do, so we don't create a dissection we'll distally. I think that's enough. Let, okay. Let's, let's take it out. If we need to inflate with another balloon, that will be fine. Okay. We'll see if we place that balloon. Okay, we did. It's with that. Hold on, hold on. Oh. Okay, let's 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 put walk the balloon back now. We're gonna now, we're, we're gonna let's, walk the balloon back. Let's take a little picture here to show. It. Walk the balloon back. Yeah. Walk the balloon back into the sheet. Okay. Now sheet the balloon. No, advance it, please. Advance both. See. Oh God, dick. Okay, now go. Well, push the wire now. Okay, go. I got the wire and the balloon. Go. No, it's no, no. Okay. Okay, let me see where the wires. Wires down, that's a problem. Ad advance the balloon, Jose. Hold on, let, let me just advance the balloon. Hold on. Now push the wire. Hold on, let me do this. That's Hold pretty on. good, actually. Hold on. That, that's pretty good. Keep it there. It's a big loop. Okay. That's good. You hold the balloon and the wires are Yes. Okay. And as it comes back, now you shift okay. the, the good. Perfect. Hey. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay, now we've got to balloon it again because the, the sheath went in now. Let's balloon it again. Flora? Okay. Well, you don't want to use it? I would leave it there, PK, and use like a, 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 a regular balloon now. It's okay. a little shorter. Give us 6020, guys. 
I think it was a seven. You don't want to use a seven? No, oh, we'll use, use a six. six. That's we'll right. Yeah. Six. yeah, let's use a 620. With a 620 reef or something and, and uh, uh, high pressure so we can do a good inflation in the middle of the of this uh, you device. ACC? You have a Dorado? That's oh. fine. Give me whatever you got. Whatever you have is fine. Okay, as you know, it's pretty difficult to get these everything here, so we, we don't have a six. What is that? Six thirty? Six twenty. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so we're gonna go ahead now and go with the Dorado. Yeah, and everything is Uh-huh. But it's okay. But we're not at the So this is an interesting point. So Elizabeth said she never gave the glyco. So it's important to remember that we give the glyco pyrolate when we do uh, internal carotid stenting because of the, uh, the, the baroreceptor reflex there. So when we're doing common, you're not worried about glyco as much. You're worried about all different kinds of other things, obviously, beyond glyco. So right now, right now what we're doing is now we're going to post-dilate this with a Dorado. Like Dr. Danga said, we're, we're trying not to be heroic, and we're going to do this in a proper manner here. So I'm just going to, I know my wire is there. I'm not happy with the shape of my wire, but right now I need it to be there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go rail. I'm just going to take this in. You can see how the stent is a little under under expanded there. Dr. Guja prepped my guide. Dr. Guja has prepped my guide. And uh, so I know I have no air in my system. So now we're going to go ahead and take the Dorado into the stent a little bit more. Wait, there's an issue here. The Dorado's not going through that bend. There it is. OK, now it's through that bend. Now I'm going to walk it out, walk the sheep back, and we're going to go up right there. Yeah, that, that's fine, because the distal part of this uh, stent is well opposed. Right there. So we just advance the balloon, but you were outside the stent there, so we're going to have to come back. Hold on. Right, right there. Go up there. You got a really balloon in eight high is pressure nominal. We're just going to go up to eight here. That's fine. I'm okay with hanging out a little bit here. Five, six. I will probably go a little seven. higher. You see there's a waste there. Eight. Uh, and that's the area I had to... Nine. She's having pain now. Tiene dolor or no? Down. Down. Okay, then. Lo siento, mama. Mejor? Okay. So now we're going to have to, again, just get this a little closer, which I'm going to do right here with Dr. Wiley's help. There you go. Actually, you know, we, I, Dr. Guja wants to do one more. I don't. We're going to walk this out. The, the reason is... Do the Why don't you do one more right okay. there? Let's, there no, I don't want to flare. Just go up here. Yeah. Dolor en su pierna? No, expanded area, doctor. Okay, lo siento. Six, seven, eight. El cuello no te duele, okay. 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 That's the restenonic tissue, doctor. So yeah. Got, uh, That's exactly where the restenosis okay. was. Okay. Now walk this out now. And uh, okay. before we'll hang it a little bit distally and all that. I think let's do a final picture and. Uh, We're gonna do some brain shots as yeah. well, obviously, George. You can see the pressure is normal now. I think maybe a simpler thing would be you take a we take a picture from here and then you advance like a, a angle catheter through or off the wire and take the brain shot selectively from the carotid. That's what, exactly what we're and, planning uh, on doing. You know, and, and then just because you don't want to agonize from in and out, in and out with this uh, stand. Okay. But this is already selective here. So what Dr. Wiley is saying, we're already selective here, so we might as well just do everything through here, which may might be true. But let me just convince myself so. that I'm okay here. So, you know, for everybody at home, I mean, there's a lot we learned here today. I mean, not only in terms of engagement and different tackling. DSA, guys? Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and ask our holder breath, please. Okay. Aguanta la respiración. Aguanta. 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 Okay, very good. Respira. Wow, that was a very fast injection. There's a wow. fast flow now. Great. Okay, well, you can see there's good... <laughs> Powerful injection. <laughs> George. Well, the flow now is very fast. We can't, we can't. Uh, I think it's very important to look at that. Now, the key now is I just want to demonstrate one thing to you, to everybody at home. You want to, you want to pull the soft part of the oh, wire down. Oh, do, do. Right? Now you want to go ahead and go on coronary. So you haven't demonstrated that the, uh, that the, uh, carotid, the left carotid is good. Well, we will in a second. But first, what I want to do is demonstrate that this, there's no edge dissection. You see that? Beautiful. And now you saw that the left carotid filled as well with that injection. You see that now? See that? 
So it's not a very good filling, but it is filling. We'll no, it's perfect because you are well engaged from uh, from yeah. uh, in the in so where now we are. The now we'll just do the brain shots. Senor, tell her to look forward. Uh, Liz, you remember putting her head straight? Yes. Okay, my amor. Perfect. Okay. When you say you want to close your eyes. Okay. Okay. Saw that yeah, before? Yeah. Okay. So can we go back to the other angel outside, Ray? I want to. I want to make sure that. So one of the things that we're seeing now is that the left carotid uh, is filling. The ACA is filling. Did we not see it last time? I thought we saw ACA, the whole brain. ACA was filling. The whole brain was filling with the left vertebral. Oh, the left the vertebral. vertebral. Okay. Can you show it outside, Karthik? Yeah. Can you take a camera outside, guys, and let Dr. Guja talk about it while me and Dr. Wiley do some pictures here? We're good. What is ACT? We're good now. Well, we have great undergrade flow, and we're going to see now the, uh, um, we saw the middle cerebral, and then we're going to see the anterior cerebral now and see how that goes. She's never seen so much flow in the brain for a long time. Looks like the anterior still fills on the left side. So now That's Dr. Wiley good. was saying how we need to watch for hyperperfusion, which is what we're gonna, we're gonna look at now. She's neurologically been intact so far. We're gonna have our neurologist see her. And then like, like we said now, we're gonna engage the left carotid and take a picture if we need to after Dr. Guja looks at the films. Karthik, any, anything that you, you're pulling it up yet? Yeah. So now we're going to go ahead and walk this out. Get us up. So we're just going to leave so this wire here. I'm going to walk this back. So we can see it here that. Uh, Pretty picture. This is your left uh, left common carotid. We injected it. You can see there is a. It's mostly dominant with the ECA. The ECA territory is more dominant. Looks like she has very significant nerves in the ACA. But it's distal ACA, ICI. Uh, so you can see it right here. It fills. These are all the these are all the epicranial uh, arteries from the um, ECA. You can see the ICA distally is completely occluded. There is no ACA or the MCA. So the MCA territory looks like it fills from the basilar arteries, and the ACA is occluded now. Luckily, because we opened up that artery, the ACA is being filled by the contralateral right. Uh, right ACA through the anterior communicating artery. So technically she now has full blood supply to the brain. So what, what, what was the finding, Karthik? I'm sorry, I missed that. So, um, so she has um, occluded distal IC ICA. On the left? Left ICA. Oh, okay, good. So her MCA territory was filled by the dominant left vertebral artery in the basilar system. And she never had the ACA of the left filled from any system. Okay, then we don't need to worry about now, it. Now she has, I just showed them, that's, that's, oh, your, that's, no, we're that's your ECA. From the Can you side. show me the left carotid shot there? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's important for the audience to always go back. And you know, um, the reason we did not go ahead and give, give, your, your, give all the pictures, no, 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 not here, guys. The other one, the, other, the film where Dr. Guja is. Card thing, you're, you're blocking the film. So, so you can see here that, that, they, that the, there is the left, it's occluded. So, so you can see here that, that basically she was living off her posterior circulation uh, for the entire brain. And now we've restored it through the anterior circulation um, on, the, on, the, on the left side, on the right side. And therefore now she has complete circulation both anterior and posterior. So I think we did a, a, a lot of justice here. 
So there's no reason for us to engage this karatid now and, and further traumatize the aorta. I think, I think what we're going to do is follow up here is go ahead and get velocities um, at our ultrasound lab here with Dr. Olin prior to her going home and then have Dr. Guja follow up in his office at, uh, at his office here in, in Mount Sinai. The, the, uh, the other thing we'll also do is, uh, is uh, as far as antiplatelet therapy, George, I was wondering, George, what would you do? Now, now she has a graft with two stents in it, with such a precarious kind of circulation here. Uh, would you still stick with aspirin and Plavix, George, Dr. Wiley? I would definitely because, she, uh, you know, the others are contraindicated because of the TIA and okay. uh, other problems she had. But I would extend this therapy essentially forever. Uh, and um, if there's any bleeding thing, I would be kind of to decrease, um, to stop the Plavix in this case, uh, to stop the aspirin, I should say, and continue the Plavix in this case. Uh, of course, she's an extreme, extreme vasculopath, this patient. So, I, you know, I, I don't think this is a good idea to be lighting up on the antiplatelet therapy. Yeah, Dr. Wilder just wanted to make a little comment on the anatomy as well. Yeah, it was interesting in the previous picture that uh, Dr. Guja showed that the importance of the external carotid, that external carotid was supplying collaterals to the posterior circulation via the occipital branch of the uh, external. So, you know, so here, you know, it's a perfect example of how, you know, a complex case can be handled in our approach. We obviously are work very closely with our surgeons here at Sinai, and they're fully, you know, fully supportive of all the things that we're doing here. But I think in this case, it would have been hard for Dr. Ferries or any great surgeon to go ahead and do a cut down on a neck that's already been operated on, uh, you know, at this stage. So at this stage, we're going to stop. Uh, well, you know, I thank all of you for coming. I thank Dr. Dangus, and uh, I thank Elizabeth, uh, Dr. Guja, Dr. Di uh, Dr. Lascano, Dr. Bosker, and, and Dr. Wiley for this great case. I think we'll do the recap over there. And George, I'm gonna let you sign off. Great, this was a phenomenal case, a phenomenal case of the uh, osteal stand of a aortocarotid graft, an extremely rare vascular structure uh, that had severe subocclusive inside restenosis. The most difficult part of the case was successfully uh, engaging the graft and successfully delivering a stiff wire into the uh, uh, into that um, uh, graft. And from then on, uh, with the expert uh, uh, support of the guides, etc., the case ran uh, smoothly, and the, uh, uh, finally a cover stand was placed in this position, again at the ostium of the aorta, uh, right off the aortic arch, that is. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments regarding this case, you could be submitting this through the questions button at the website. This case is going to be uh, viewable uh, as, you know, as part of the archives, uh, similar with any other case we've ever shown or done here uh, in the endovascular uh, uh, website www.peripheralinterventions.org. And uh, uh, I want to uh, close from New York and uh, uh, thank you for your participation from anywhere in the world and thank you for your support. And we meet again here on September 24th at the starting same time if you're in the United States, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or similar time anywhere around the world you may be viewing us from. Goodbye from New York.